From beating opponents in less than 30 seconds to establishing a decade-long unbeaten streak, the last remnant of Japan's biggest MMA promotion, Pride, Fedor Emelianenko has finally put down his gloves, ending his 23-year-long career. The 46-year-old fighter is officially retired after losing to Ryan Bader at Bellator 290. Fedor's career may have ended on a sour note, but do you know why MMA's greatest heavyweight never competed in the UFC? Born in the Soviet Union in Ukraine in 1976, Fedor's family decided to move to a mining town in Russia. He has three siblings, an elder sister Marina and two younger brothers in Alexander and Ivan. Alexander went on to follow in Fedor's footsteps in MMA later on. At a very young age, he fell in love with the sport of judo, sambo wrestling and other self-defense martial arts. His love affair with martial arts led him to picking up medals in sambo and judo tournaments while serving for the Russian army as a firefighter in the late 90s. But how did he venture into MMA? For that, we'll have to dial the clock back all the way back into the early days of mixed martial arts. The sport was still in its infancy and was struggling to gain mainstream attention as the UFC faced bankruptcy in America. On the other side of the world, Japan's Nobuyuki Sakakibara founded his own MMA organization, Pride, on October the 11th, 1997. In the same year, Fedor's time with the army came to a close, which opened doors leading him back to martial arts. He continued to compete in judo and sambo tournaments, picking up a bronze medal in 1998 and 1999 respectively. It was only on May 21, 2000 when he dived into the world of MMA and joined the Russian top team and fought for Rings Russia. Training with experienced fighters, he kick-started his pro career with a four-fight win streak, which led him to suffering his first loss on December 22, 2000 against Tsuyoshi Kosaka via a controversial doctor's stoppage as Fedor reopened a brutal cut under his eye. No matter what storm was brewing inside of him, Fedor's face would show no emotion. The calm, the mystique, and the invincible aura only began to take form as he got ready to face his next challenge. Rebounding from that loss, he went on to win six fights in a row and made his Pride debut on 23rd June 2002. While competing in MMA, he also won gold medals in World Sambo tournaments. In his time at Pride, he beat the likes of legendary fighters and former UFC champions in Andrei Olovsky, Tim Sylvia, Mark Hunt, Mirko Krokop, Mark Coleman, and Big Nog, Antonio Rodrigo Noguera. And he went on to be seen as the greatest heavyweight of all time. His run elevated him to the status of being the baddest man on the planet. But unfortunately, Pride's alleged connection with the Mafia, aka the Yakuza, caused the organization to shut down. This controversy saw UFC making the ultimate move to purchase their biggest rival promotion. With UFC's roster being mixed with Pride's long list of superstars, everyone's eyes gleamed with anticipation to see the last emperor set foot in the octagon against the likes of Frank Mir, Randy Couture, and heavyweight kingpin Brock Lesnar. Sadly, UFC and Fedor never came to terms and a dream fight against Lesnar never materialized. UFC president Dana White still regards it as one dream fight which he failed to put together and it continues to sting him as his only regret. Instead, Fedor joined Wama and became their heavyweight champion, extending his streak even more. As all good things must come to an end, so did Fedor's long unbeaten reign as he suffered his first loss in over a decade against Fabrizio Verdum in Strike Force. He went on a bit of a losing streak as he lost two more times in the same promotion against Dan Henderson and Antonio Silva. Much like Pride, even Strikeforce shut its doors only for the UFC to take over, but missing out on Fedor once again. He has become my obsession, man. <laughs> you know, he has become my obsession. I want it worse than the fans want it now, believe me. And any guy who's who's considered, you know, one of the best in the world, I, you know, we want and I talk to guys every day and they're no different just because, you know, we've had some, uh, I wouldn't call it bad blood, but, you know, we just had some, you know, I talked some smack about them, they talked some smack about me. It doesn't mean that, uh, that we can't get deals done. The Last Emperor never captured the world title again as he jumped from promotion to promotion fighting all over the world, but his legacy remains intact as MMA's hardcore fans still regard him as the greatest, despite the continued pushback from Dana White. Get, you know, people liked him, so they praised him and, you know, he never got, he never got to test himself over here. But I, I was never, I never was one of the guys that thought he was one of the greatest of all time.
With his final fight taking place this past weekend, the MMA world has truly closed a very significant chapter of MMA as Pride's last hero retires. Do you regard Fedor as the GOAT? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.